way you know the syntax, and we talked about pure virtual functions, right? No, we talked about virtual functions, not pure. Pure too? Yeah, we touched that. Okay, okay, so we're good. So, so that's the thing. So, quickly going through what we've talked about. Uh, one thing I want to say, of course, uh, uh, although I'm recording, it's kind of a, a paradox. Do not rely on the recordings. Recordings are just a bonus. If I if it gets rec recorded, it gets recorded. Don't rely on them and say, I'm not going to come to class and I'm going to see the recording later on. It may not get recorded. The audio may be bad. Many, th many different things. But if something like that happens, you can always go to Notes Archive and find the same topic from years ago and watch that one. It's the same thing. It doesn't make any difference. Okay? Just remember that. So if anything goes wrong and there is something that the recording is missing or there is some problem, go to the OOP244 uh, and then go to Notes Archive, Farlad's Note Archive. Over there, there are, you pick one and, oh, not this one. I picked the one that is half and half. So pick this one, for example, and then you go to, the, to one of the sections and everything is there. And also the recordings are all down here. So you can, uh, virtual methods, pure, yada, yada, go over there and watch the recording. It's not, it's not exactly the same, but you're going to get an idea of what happens. So that's that. Number two, we talked about. Uh, inheritance, we understood how inter inheritance work, uh, and uh, uh, we understood that at any moment that uh, um, in the hierarchy of inheritance, at any moment that I um, have a child class uh, pointed by a parent class, the child class forgets everything and they acts like a parent. And we said the cure for that thing is to put virtual in front of the name of the functions we want to upgrade. So what we do is in our, in, in our base class, what we do in our base class, the functions we want to enforce upgrading in, we add virtuals to them and therefore those functions are guaranteed, the virtual guarantees that the latest version of those functions are called and Everything's going to be fine after that. So at any moment, if I actually create <clears throat> uh, uh, a reference that points, a reference that holds the reference of a child, or a pointer that holds the address of a child with absolutely no problem, all the virtual methods guarantee that the latest version will be called. Although it's an animal pointer, it's going to act like a cat because those values are virtual. And the ones are not. They will be forgotten. They will forgot that they were a cat, okay, in this case. So uh, the move in this case was not a virtual function. Therefore, move remained like an animal, but act and sound were actually improved. We could always improve the things in two different ways. One is completely overwrite the parent's action, parent's uh, method and write something absolutely new, nothing with what parent will, do, will need to do and create it like that, which means oh, the, 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 the parent's action will be completely shadowed by the function that overrides it. Uh, or we can actually reuse the parent's method and add features to it which is calling the parent method. So calling the parent method, or like, unlike regular method calling, because it's within the properties of this class, has to be done through the class and scope resolution. There is no dot over here. You, because there is no object, you're inside the class. You have to say parent classes sound to refer to it. And also we mentioned from this moment, Till the time you die, you always have your destructors as virtual. So from now on, a destructor that doesn't have a virtual keyword is an invalid destructor. Anything you create, no matter if inheritance is involved or not, the destructor must be virtual. Why? Because if it's a base class pointing to a base class, virtual is completely ignored. We don't care. If it's a 
parent, child class pointing to a child class, virtual is ignored. We don't care. The only time that virtual comes to play is that when a parent pointer is holding a child or a parent's reference that is holding a child. And that's where virtual comes to play. And that's when we need our destructor to be virtual. So it's a win-win situation. You always uh, make a destructor virtual. After we said that, we came to the point that sometimes when you are dealing with specific type of base classes, we mentioned, like, we, ex we explained, we had the example of human beings talking, and we said we cannot implement human beings talking because we don't know what language the human's going to talk. We know a human can talk. What needs to be done is when the inhuman is inherited into a human being with language, with whatever culture or um, nationality or whatever that dictates what the language is, then we can implement the talking. So this, this uh, uh, tells us that many of the base classes that you design, you know certain actions are supposed to happen, but you don't know how. When that thing happens, that craves for a virtual function to enforce the action to be in the child, but don't implement it now. It's kind of a, a nice type of procrastination. So anything in the base class you th that you think it's required, but it's not obvious how it's supposed to be done, you create a virtual function, first of all, to guarantee that the latest version happens. Then you set it to zero, which means the virtual function of yours is a pure virtual function. No action is uh, tied to it until it's implemented in children. This renders the class in which you have the pure virtual function abstract, which means that class cannot be instantiated anymore, and that class becomes an abstract base class, which is the next example that we have. So in this example, we have an animal, and the animal doesn't know how to make a sound. Because it's a cat, I want to make it meow. If it's a dog, I want to make it woof woof. So I can't do it. I can't implement it over here. There is uh, no way for me to know what is the sound of the animal should, could be. Because of that fact, what happens is that I make that one pure virtual. Because of making it pure virtual, animal becomes abstract, and it's not instantiable anymore, which means you cannot create an instance animal by its own. You need to create its descendant for the animal to get created within them. An animal by itself doesn't mean anything. And that makes the animal an abstract base class. Hence, as definition, somebody asks you what makes uh, in C++ a base class abstract, the answer is presence of at least one pure virtual method. If at least one, if even one pure virtual method exists in a class, the whole class will get rendered abstract. What is the opposite of abstract? Concrete. A concrete class is a class that has no pure virtual methods. So if I inherit the animal into a cat and implement the sound to meow, then that cat becomes a concrete class. If I inherit an animal to a bird, and because I still don't know what is the sound of a bird, I add the features that a bird has, like flying and all those feathers and all the things that we have, but still I don't know how the sound is going to be. Although bird is going to be a child of animal, but because it did not implement the sound, it still remains abstract, which means even that bird cannot get instantiated. Now I inherit that bird to a, I don't know, uh, um, a crow or a pigeon or a... Um, or a baji or something, and then I specify what the sound can be, and those classes can be concrete. And that's what we call abstract based classes. So in this example for, uh, that I have, I have an animal A. If I uncomment that one, animal cannot get pre instantiated. It's going to give you an error, say abstract based class cannot get instantiated. But I have an animal pointer that I have a cat and a dog and a cat and an address of a dog. 
and if I go through them one by one, automatically the proper things for the sound will be, will be called. So I'm going to say animal, make a sound. Although animal by itself doesn't have a function sound, but because it's a pure virtual one, it guarantees that the latest one's going to get called, and therefore we have that. Are we okay with this? That's where we stopped last time, right? Okay. So, just run. Oh, 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 oh. Push the wrong button. Stop, 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 stop. No, don't run. And I failed? How did it fail? Oh, because I have debug.h. I forget it. So, I'm going to come over here and just remove everything from here. I don't want it. Okay, so let's set this as startup project. So when I run it, obviously, when it runs, all these animals get created. And each time an animal is called, automatically the proper sound is selected and is executed. Okay? And when the, the delete happens, the same thing because the animal has uh, a pure virtual, uh, sorry, a virtual destructor. Uh, a destructor cannot be pure. It's impossible. Because a class always needs to get destructed. It, 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 it has to be removed. You cannot have that one. Okay? So... The next thing that we have, now, if, if in C++, uh, C++ doesn't care if you have one pure virtual method or all the classes' uh, methods are virtual. It does not matter to C++. If I have such a scenario, though, with respect to object orientation, then it carries a, a, a new name. It has nothing to do with C++. That C++ uh, in C++, one pure virtual or all pure virtual, absolutely no difference. So if animal is like this for me, which essentially says act, move, and sound, everything is pure virtual, no attributes, no constructors, and only one virtual destructor that is defaulted, which means an empty default destructor. This in C++'s eyes is no different with the other animal. They are both just abstract base classes. But in object orientation, such abstract base class is called an interface. An interface is an abstract base class that has only pure virtual methods and nothing by that. So essentially, they are completely an idea. They are just blueprint of other things to get created out of them. Essentially, I'm saying, if you are creating an animal, for me, an animal is something that does this. Now, if you are creating an animal, you have to create these so, in my eyes, they are actually an animal. Okay? And this we call an interface. The cool thing about interfaces is that you can actually design actions tied to interfaces. This is just an array interface pointer. This is just an example. You go through it, you will see that there's absolutely no difference between this and that. So if, if you look at the main over here, I just have a bigger uh, class over here. So if you look at the class diagram, it's kind of, I just expanded everything in and, and, and had everything. So I have an animal, I have a pet out of a pet, I have a cat, goldfish, and a bird, and bird has something called body. So it's like a bigger hierarchy of classes, OK? And the animal over here is just an interface. Therefore, when I actually come to my main, and I look at my main, <clears throat> what I create over here, I, it could be an animal pointer or a pet pointer. It doesn't make any difference. Because anything that becomes virtual, it's transitive. Everything in pet is virtual, too, at the same time. So if I have an animal pointer holding all those stuff or a pet pointer holding all those stuff, they're all the same. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing that happens over here is that animal enforces that any kind of animal created from now on, uh, a 
a pet one or a wild one, they must have the same basic features. It guarantees that. And that's a guarantee in design. So what is good about interfaces? The good thing about interfaces are, is that you as a person who designs an interface, you can actually start implementing actions based on your interfaces methods, although those methods don't exist. For example, As you see in the previous one, because this is a pure interface, there is no CPP file for animal. The animal is just pure virtual functions, no implementations, no CPP file for animal, right? But when you look at this one, we will see that although animal over here is an interface, but I have a CPP file for it. Why? Because for an animal with those pure virtual functions, I am defining insertion into O street. So if you insert an animal onto C out, into C out, what's going to happen? Nothing is implemented over here. These are all imaginary functions. But I can use those imaginary functions and say, what does it mean for an animal to get printed? And I'm going to say, for an animal to get printed, it should act, move, or make a sound. Whatever. This has no meaning. The animal doesn't have any action to do anything. But as soon as somebody builds an animal and improves it to something else, then this action for those things are defined, is defined. You don't need to create them anymore. And that saves lots of programming, which means by creating a base trust with common things and actions working based on those common actions, the whole descendants of that interface will be able to perform those actions based on their own way of doing things. And my code, instead of one by one calling actions in the thing, would be simply saying, display the animal. And the animal is cat, budgie, and goldfish. But when an animal, a cat reference, a, an animal reference of a cat is sent to that. Automatically, the pure virtual function calls the latest function. Therefore, cat is going to say meow. Bodge is going to say tweet. Or uh, goldfish is going to say whatever. OK? All right? Goldfish says what? Blop? I don't know. It, has, it, it says something. I, I know that I said something over there. I don't remember what. It's this thing. Yeah, so, so as we see over here, any, at any moment, <laughs> at each, po each point, when I actually go to this overload, it actually acts like that one. So I just, I'm just interested to see what is. Yeah, it says glop. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so, yeah, so that's what it is. Anyways, now, uh, that's it. So. That's the whole thing about uh, interfaces and uh, pure virtual functions and so on and so forth. Uh, what we need to, but so uh, what I did over here, and this is eight, for the other one, I added the constructor messages. So you see, you can play with it and start, uh, 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 what should we call it, adding uh, features to it and, and, and uh, learn how everything works. So ninth one is the same one with constructor messages. Now, again, take this, OK, and start adding features, removing features, and work with it and see how it works out and learn how it works. And that's it. There is nothing else to go through. That was it. And this is the last time that we are doing this. And next time you are coming here, you're going to do a quiz, and it's going to be all workshop. There is no more uh, lectures happening on workshops. OK, so review, review, review. Come with questions. Keep coming with questions of anything. Anything you want to review to be done, you let me know. I'll go through it from the beginning. OK? Anything. There are two topics that I have to cover to finish the whole thing in a semester. One is templates, and the other one is derived classes with resources. And templates are, uh, we are teaching only the function templates, so it's not much to go through. 
but I will teach you the class templates too, just to be ready for three, four, five. Okay? Uh, it's not going to be in the test. On test, you're going to have only function template. And uh, derived classes with resources is around like 30 minutes, 40 minutes lecture maximum if I babble. Okay? It's a uh, very simple concept. The only thing we're going to do is that when you have an inherited class and you have resources in the inherited class and the base class, when copy construction happens, you have to make sure that you always copy the base too. That's all. It's a very simple thing. I'll go through it and you'll find out. Okay? That's it. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections. Objections. <laughs> all right. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Wilgard and see what the problem with this program is. And uh, let's... <laughs>